Hey there guys, welcome to the Lunatic Reader. This is Tarun. I'm a bibliophile and also I love creating bookish content. So without wasting much of your time, let's get started with today's video. So today I am going to present you guys with a compiled book review of the magnum opus from the Indian mythology thriller genre Harappa Trilogy written by Vinit Bajpai. So this video is going to be slightly different from my usual ones guys because I am not going to present you with the comprehensive review of each book individually from this trilogy but I will be giving you a compiled review whereas I will be talking about the basic plot common characters and various other attributes from this trilogy without giving out any spoilers to you. So even if you haven't read any of this book from this trilogy, you can happily watch this video through the end. So before moving further ahead into the review, let's take a look at the physical overview of these books and also a bunch of other details. Now talking about the plot, as I've mentioned earlier, I'm not going to reveal much information about these three books individually because that will leave out some huge spoilers for you while reading of course. So I'll just provide you with a basic synopsis of the whole trilogy so that you can get to understand what exactly is Harappa trilogy all about. Basically the story is set in five different time periods and locations which the author keeps narrating parallelly. So quite often you'll find that the author is actually switching from one timeline to another on a chapter to chapter basis. But among these five different time periods, two crucial time periods that really create the genesis of whole Harappa trilogy are 1700 BC Harappa civilization from the ancient times and 2017 Varnasi from modern day India. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but I'll try explaining it to you in a much simpler way. The core subject revolves around two major characters from this plot, Vivaswan Pujari from the ancient Harappan times 1700 BCE and the other character Vidyut Shastri from the modern day India 2017 Varnasi. Vivaswan Pujari is a highly regarded nobleman among the chief administrators from the Harappan clan. But some conspirators from the kingdom who envy Vivaswan Pujari for his success plot a hideous trap to set him up against a crime that he never committed. And they can stoop down to the lowest levels one can possibly ever imagine in order to dethrone Vivaswan from his power and position. On the other hand, in modern day India, we have Vidyut Shastri, a charming young entrepreneur from Delhi who is leading a happy life along with his girlfriend Damini. Until one fine morning when he receives an immediate summon to visit Varnasi by his uncle over a call so that he can meet his great grandfather Dwaraka Shastri who is currently on a deathbed. Dwaraka Shastri is a very powerful clan leader of the Dev Rakshasa Mutt in Varanasi. His bloodline carries an ancient curse that can unleash the most horrifying apocalypse onto the fate of humanity. And he needs to unfold a dark secret to his great grandson Vidyut before the evil plagues over mankind forever. As the story keeps progressing through different time periods parallelly, you will witness various ancient civilizations, new characters, multiple subplots and also a bunch of known figures from our own history and mythology coming into the picture. I am sure you might be having so many questions running in your mind right now such as what exactly is the connection between Vivaswan Pujari from Harappan civilization 1700 BCE and Vidyut Shastri from modern day India 2017. And why are there so many timelines involved in the story? How are they related to each other? What's the ancient curse that is imposed onto Dwarka Shastri's bloodline which is about to bring forth the darkest chapters into human history? And who's the prophesied last Deita that can only save the entire world from an unforeseen apocalypse? Or will Dwarka Shastri finally reveal the dark secret to his descendant Vidyut? In order to figure out the answers to all these questions, you'll have to read Harappa Trilogy. So that was the basic plot outline of Harappa trilogy guys but of course there are a lot more other elements to it 
and you'll find a lot of other interesting characters which I didn't talk about in this video and the vastness and the scale of Harappa trilogy is really really huge I mean once you start reading it it will completely transcend you into a whole new world where you'll find everything is pretty much extra large in size because it deals with multiple aspects not just mythology history in specific but you'll get to see all of that once you start reading it I think it would be genuinely wrong from my end to categorize it into mythology fiction alone because it deals with multiple genres you know that's how it is I think it's the first of its kind experiment made in Indian literature till date because we have seen books that are uh, retellings of the ancient tales are Puranas or Itihasa but Harappa trilogy is something different you know it will leave you with a fresh experience so that's the reason I think it's definitely worth trying anyways I'll be discussing all of this later in the second half of this video so right now let's talk about the characters of Harappa trilogy Vineet Pajpai has done a phenomenal job with the character designing and development because quite often we find that the authors don't actually invest their time and efforts while shaping up their characters that's the reason you don't find a proper background of the character you don't get to know much about them you know what are the characters likes and dislikes you know this will make you have uh, a lack of connection with the protagonist or any other character for that matter because certainly this will impact how interesting the story is going to be for you as a reader but Vineet Pajpai has given a lot of attention to these sort of minute details while crafting his characters and that's the reason every character from Harappa trilogy has its own individuality has its own strong personality and these characters really have a very strong impact on the story of Harappa trilogy or in simple terms I can just say that you know these characters are basically the backbone of Harappa trilogy and of course the story too Vivaswan Pujari, Dwaraka Shastri, Vidyut, Naina, Priyambada, Damini and Ranga these are my personal favorite characters from the Harappa trilogy but of course there are a lot more other characters that you will discover while the story keeps progressing but these are the ones uh, you'll find them very often in all the three books these are the common characters from Harappa trilogy so definitely I would say I really had fun while reading these because they create a lot of intense uh, kind of an environment whenever they are present uh, in the sequence Vineet Bajpai's writing style is quite fast paced, gripping and will definitely grab all your attention right from the very first chapter. As the story involves a lot of historical and mythological backdrop, the author keeps switching from one timeline to another on a chapter to chapter basis, just like Ashwin Sanghi's writing style. But of course, Vineet Bajpai has his own unique way of describing a story or his own method of storytelling. So that's the reason even the most complex uh, situations are described through his writing style in a very simple manner. I mean there are few chapters in which the lead characters have discussion on some historic events that took place which are very complex in nature. I mean not many of us know about these things even I didn't really know about any, uh, any such matter that took place in history. But Vineet Bajpai has given a proper kind of synopsis of all these incidents through his writing style in a very simple manner so I think his fast paced writing style will definitely uh, it definitely complements the kind of undertone the whole Harappa trilogy has the narration is crisp and intriguing to read but at the same time there are few issues which I'll need to address in this review such as whenever there is a mention of the protagonist Vidyut Shastri the author goes on a crazy marathon of glorifying his character as if he's the direct manifestation of the divine himself I mean it makes sense to certain extent I know that heroic representation of the protagonist is important it helps uh, to elevate the character even more but Vineet Pajpai takes it to a desperate level of exaggerating because I still remember in the initial few chapters of the first installment from Harappa trilogy the author almost occupies a whole page in order to praise and describe the kind of uh, 
traits the character has, how strong Vidyut is, how charming he is, how cool he is and all of that. I mean, it didn't really make any sense. But still, I was like, okay, because this is the introduction of the character. So it does make sense, I guess. But later on, I found that he kept repeating it every single time when there was Vidyut involved in a particular scenario. So I found it very awkward because honestly, I find Vivasan Pujari's character much stronger in terms of his physical strength, the kind of uh, elevation the character has been presented with. You'll find a lot of action sequences where uh, Vivasan Pujari is actually involved. So definitely he feels like a much more larger than life figure in terms of his uh, character designing and all of that. Whereas Vidyut is like a good enough charming protagonist, but he's not as strong as uh, Vivaswan Pujari. So I think in order to compensate that sort of an imbalance among the lead characters, he actually used his verbal praisings and exaggerated level of glorification of Vidyut Shastri in order to you know keep both these characters really balanced and all of that and the other issue I was facing while reading is the second installment from this trilogy Pralai the Great Deluge actually contains various chapters that are based solely on conversations that take place between Vidyut Shastri and his great-grandfather Dwaraka Shastri so in these chapters they talk about some very brief subjects like contemporary history. They talk about some religious organizations, secret uh, groups or something like that. So these subjects really add up some context to the story. But at the same time, they could have been avoided, you know, not at least in so many chapters. They could have made it uh, a bit more concise and cut them down to like two chapters or three chapters for maximum. But so many chapters solely based on conversations between uh, Vidyut Shastri and Dwarka Shastri. I don't say they are boring or something, but at the same time, they are very exhausting, you know. They were not really necessary. And finally, talking about my personal reading experience with Harappa Trilogy, I should admit that it gave me one of the most unique and fresh experiences I've ever had while reading an Indian mythology fiction book because it doesn't just deal with mythology or history alone, but it also has an undertone of, um, let's say, spirituality, talks about contemporary politics, and it also uh, will take you through the world of, you know, secret societies and a lot of other stuff, which I can't really reveal here. So it will give you a very wholesome experience because these kind of experiments have not been initiated by any other author until now in this particular genre because most often the books that we read are basically the retellings or reimaginations of the author of our ancient original indigenous stories let's say Puranas or Ramayan Mahabharat basically the Itihasas but Vineet Bajpai's approach is very much new and different in its nature because he is not just introducing you to a new story a new ecosystem as well as is presenting you with a very powerful and you know strong characters that are new. I mean, you have not seen Dwarka Shastri before. I mean, you have not heard about anything like that. Who's a spiritual warlord or something from Varanasi? Who can, you know, there's a lot of thing going on with these characters. So they are very interesting. They are very... Uh, good to read and what I find fascinating over here is Vineet Pajpai does not just provide us with some very powerful male lead characters but also he has created some really good female characters that are equally strong and it's not like they're just some sidekicks of the protagonist but they do add a lot of value to the story and they have their own importance uh, in the story you know because every single character is designed in such a way that they have uh, the ability to cause certain impact on the storyline. So that's really a very unique thing to notice because quite often we don't find that many strong female characters which almost have the uh, you know dominance to take over the male lead characters whenever they are present in a particular sequence. But Vineet Pajpai has done once again a fabulous job over here. 
But of course, Harappa trilogy does come with some limitations that I spoke about earlier, like the kind of exaggeration the author has done in certain chapters in order to provide us with a proper background of the whole story that didn't really work. These chapters could have been easily avoided in the process of editing, but the publishers didn't really do so. And they could have made hardly no difference even if they were completely taken off these books. And moreover, the kind of over glorification the author has done with the character Vidyut Shastri was not really justified in any places. And I think these were some of the limitations or some of the very few things that I didn't really like about Harappa trilogy. And also there are so many characters in these books that you might get confused at a moment and you might not remember all these characters because I had a problem with some characters in order to, you know, recollect where did I exactly read them before and all of that. But of course, Harappa trilogy is not a perfect combination of everything. Keeping in mind that this was the first ever fiction book the author has tried. He has done a fantastic job with that. So my overall rating for Harappa trilogy is 8.5 out of 10 stars. Because initially when I picked it up, I had no clue on what I was just about to experience. But after reading it, I can definitely say that it's one of the best trilogies I've ever tried from Indian mythology fiction genre. And I didn't really have much of an expectations on Vinit Bajpai back then because of course he was a new name uh, when compared to the popular writers like Kevin Missal, Ashwin Sanghi and Amish Tripathi. So that was one of the reasons. But of course, Vinit Bajpai has his own unique way of uh, storytelling and the kind of bar he has set right now, it's almost really hard for any other writer to reach it because the kind of ecosystem he has created and the new characters that you'll find in Vinit Bajpai's Harappa trilogy because we kind of got used to retellings of popular tales but Harappa trilogy really breaks that kind of a stereotype which is set around and I think you should definitely try this if you are an Indian mythology fiction story lover because you'll definitely enjoy reading it. So that's all for today's video guys. I hope you found this review helpful and also I've been receiving a lot of complaints from you guys lately in the comment section below saying that I don't upload my videos frequently. But I should say I'm really sorry for that. I apologize to you uh, because I had multiple reasons for doing so and I had to catch up with, uh, you know, shifting to a new location. And that's the reason, as you can see, the background is different here and I had to arrange all my books again. And, you know, a lot of things happened uh, in this duration of over two months. But I'll surely try uploading videos on a much regular basis from now on and Thanks a lot for your love and support guys because honestly I was not expecting such lovely responses in the initial stages of my channel's growth but it definitely motivates me a lot and it feels great. So I'll try coming up with better content and meet you guys with my next video. Till then keep reading and keep watching The Lunatic Reader.